can you hear the plea? Who will go and rise for me? Who will tell the ones I love of His precious blood, full and free? Can you hear the call? Who will rise and give me all? Will you be the one to stand? Will you heed the Master's call? I will follow Him, I will follow Him, surrendering all. I will give my life, I will sacrifice for the Master's call. No mountain is too high, no mountain too high, no valley too low. My eyes are on the goal, my God is in control. I will give my all, I will give my all for the Master's call. How shall they believe believe in him of whom they have not heard? heard. And how shall they hear if we do not preach the word? How beautiful are the feet of them that go. Will you lead me? I will go. I will follow him. I will follow him. Surrendering all. I will give my life. I will sacrifice for the master's call. No mountain is too high. No mountain. My eyes are on the goal, my God is in control. I will give my all, I will give my all for the Master's call. I will follow Him, I will follow Him, surrendering all. I will give my life. I will sacrifice for the Master's call. No mountain is too high, no mountain too high, no valley too low. My eyes are on the goal, my God is in control. I will give my all for the Master's call. the 
said go so i will go you said tell so i would tell sharing your story proclaiming your glory to a world that needs to know what they're worth and i will take your name to every nation, spread the goodness of salvation, baptize in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. I will teach the things that you've commanded, make sure that your truth is planted. Jesus, I do whatever it takes to bring glory to your name. said love so I will love you said give so I will give and I will lay down my life for the gospel of Christ for to deny would be too high of a price and I will take your name nation spread the goodness of salvation baptize in the name of the father the son and the holy spirit i will teach the things that you've commanded make sure that your truth is planted jesus i will do whatever it takes to bring glory to your name precious name oh how sweet hope of earth and joy of heaven precious name oh how sweet hope of earth and joy of heaven I will take a name nation spread the goodness of salvation baptize in the name of the father the son and the holy spirit i will teach the things that you've commanded make sure that your truth is planted jesus i will do whatever it takes to bring glory to your name said go so I will go you said tell so I would tell all right it's time now for the the last uh, the last message for our missions conference and um, Hope you've enjoyed the time here today or this week and uh, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and today three times today. Actually, hope you've enjoyed the time and I hope God has uh, spoken to your heart. And I hope now you'll be obedient to do whatever it is God has had you to do. And I uh, had lunch today with Brother Fred Kindheart, talking about all the great food in Mexico. Talking about things like cow stomach soup. Delicious. Yeah. And uh, cow tongue tacos. Wonderful. And I already told him I don't eat that weird stuff. I eat that as exotic as I go was like uh, fajitas or hot wings. And he's talking about eating things that you know is uh, is, is hot, so hot you got to have a license to sell it and that kind of deal. And I don't care anything at all about that. But I'm glad there's missionaries like Brother Fred Kindheart to go to Mexico, and uh, 27 years down there planting churches, doing a work for God, doing a great job now for the Lord through Macedonia World Baptist Missions. And I'm glad to be his friend. I'm glad he's here to preach to us tonight. So, Brother Fred, you come on and uh, preach to us, okay? Is he on now? Okay, good. Thank you, Pastor. I found out your pastor's a meat and taters kind of guy. Amen. I, uh, 
I saw one of those fear factor things they had on TV one time, and they were thinking that they were eating weird parts of a cow. I kept looking at it, and I thought, wow, <laughs> let me or about any of the Mexicans I know in there, and we'll enjoy every bit of that. <laughs> I had a, a butcher in Mexico that told me, you, Me you Americans are so wasteful. All we lose in Mexico is the last moo the cow lets out when we kill it. And every time I go by meat, he'd tell me that. Oh, you're so wasteful in America. So uh, I was back up here on furlough, and I was in Cracker Barrel and saw the canned cow that you turn over, and the little thing goes down and says moo. Turn it over, and it goes moo. I bought one. I got back, and I went to get meat. He said, you Americans are so wasteful. He said, uh, all we lose in Mexico is the last move the cow lets out. That's all we lose. I said, let me tell you something. I just got back from the States, and they're canning that last move the cow lets out. And I put it up there and I went, mmm. <laughs> I said, we're canning them, so don't tell me we're wasteful. Um, <laughs> he wouldn't let me have that. He said, i, I got to keep that here. You can't have that. Let me have it. But... Uh, We've got a lot of good friends in Mexico. I thank the Lord for his many blessings. I know we've got a lot to do tonight, so let me hurry. I want you to turn with me to Mark chapter number 2. Mark chapter number 2. I noticed, I'm going to get in trouble here. I noticed when your pastor was uh, talking about how young some were that were going to Callaway Gardens, he then pulled something out he was going to look at that he wrote on, and he went... <laughs> I mean, the very next sentence, he, <clears throat> yeah, he's getting there. Yes, sir. Yeah, he's getting there. Huh? <laughs> uh, Mark chapter number two, there's a lot of things we could try to bring out of this chapter. And one thing about the word of God, you never exhaust it. God's cupboard is never bare. Amen. Uh, I, I've often thought of how, how it would be kind of, uh, this has got to be an old word, teenagers, forgive me, but kind of neat. I, I know. I say some things like that, and my granddaughter's 18, and she's like, ooh, that, that, that word's outdated. Well, it's still neat. I don't care what you call it. Cool. It's something. I don't know what they call it, but to have three or four pastors come and preach and them not know what the other preach. Now, all of them preach the same verse, or five or six, or eight or ten. You'd be amazed. I know a lot of it would overlap, but there'd be a lot of different thoughts. That's the way the Bible is. Mark chapter number two. Thank you, church, for all that you've done for us down through the years. What a blessing it's been uh, to be a part of the missions family of this church and to be able to uh, just take part in in uh, helping carry the gospel and pray together and, and go and give and do. Uh, I've enjoyed every bit of it. I, I, they sang that song again tonight in my mind. They talked about no mountains too high. I thought about a few mountains that I've been able to climb. I'm talking about literal mountains. I remember the first time I went to a place called Sungo Sotla. It's in the state of Puebla, and it is back up in the hills. And at that time, I've, I've not been in several years, and I heard that they put a road in now, but when my wife and I went the first time, our oldest daughter was just, I don't know, very small, maybe a year old, maybe a little less. And uh, we got over there, and there was no way up the mountain except to walk. And I'm talking 45 minutes. And I don't mean dragging your feet, trying to go. And a lot of it was very steep and one of the things I remember is uh, we didn't know these people we was invited to come there and preach and one of them and they're talking dialect and uh, I don't even know what they're talking about and finally one of them comes, up, comes over there and we're talking uh, very Indian people I mean they got their white clothes on like somebody may have on tonight I don't know one of the young people I don't know if they do but they roll their britches up. Well, they're not really britches. They're something. I don't know what they are, but they roll them up so they didn't get muddy and have on a, a, huaraches. 
Mr. Sister Jones, what are what are you? Sandals, there we go. They had on these sandal things they made out of tar car tires and, and uh, you know, just a, a lot of different things that you're not used to going on around you. And they come and ask for our daughter. Now, she's just a little bitty baby. And uh, so you give them your daughter and they put her in this sack type thing and put her on, the, on a guy over the top that has a strap, goes over his head, and she's on his back, and uh, he walked right in front of us, and uh, our daughter went to sleep. She didn't worry about it. I mean, they don't, the kids don't worry about it near as much as we do because they're trusting mom and dad. Well, if we could do that, amen? Just trust dad. Trust the father. Trust the Lord. He's, he's in control. Uh, but uh, I think about how the... They just do whatever. I remember the first time that um, she had a chicken foot. Uh, chicken foot, the chicken feet are good in, to put in soup. I, I'm not much for eating them, but uh, they put them in the soup and it flavors the soup a whole lot. Um, and uh, we was eating at someone's house and they said, oh, here, your little daughter, she was a little bigger then, you know, she can, they, they love these didn't have a camera with us and back in those days we didn't have cell phones to take pictures with and they give her this chicken foot out of the soup it's very soft it's very yellow she had it everywhere <laughs> I mean you look over and your kids over there eating and she's got chicken foot all over her face all down her front and she's just sucking on that thing and you're like we're not in Georgia <laughs> we're not where we used to be Things are different now, uh, but uh, I guess once you start sucking on chicken feet, you can eat anything. Mm. I'd love to take your pastor, but <clears throat> I don't know if he's going to ever go anywhere with me. <laughs> uh, but I remember going up that mountain thinking, you know what? Whew, it's going to be a lot easier coming down. I don't know if you've went up and down many mountains. It's not easier coming down. Now, if you have a long incline that you can stroll down, that works good. But when you have steep mountains and steep places you're coming down, it kills your knees coming down out of that mountain. I was wishing we could turn around and go back up it, because I, I, you know, I, what I think about is the mountains when we sing about them is sometimes the difficulties, the hardships of carrying the gospel. It's not always easy, but it's always a joy. It's always a joy to carry the gospel to somebody somewhere and tell them about Jesus. Mark chapter number 2, verse 1, and again he entered into Capernaum. This is Jesus. After some days, and it was noise that he was in the house. And straightway, many were gathered together in so much that there was no room to receive them. No, not so much as about the door. And he preached the word unto them. And they come unto him, bringing one sick of the palsy, which was born of four. And when they could not come nigh unto him for the press, they uncovered the roof where he was. And when they had broken it up, they let down the bed wherein the sick of the palsy lay. When Jesus saw their faith, he said unto the sick of palsy, Son, thy sins be forgiven thee. Let's pray. Father, we love you. Lord, thank you for this church and all that it does to help spread the gospel, share your love and the salvation message with others here and around the world. Lord, thank you for hearts and lives that are willing, Lord, to be faithful and to go and do and work and labor in so many areas and so many ways. We ask you tonight, God, that you would encourage our hearts, that we might just do all you'd want us to do, that lost souls can be saved, they can hear the gospel, they can come to Jesus. Lord, it will be worth it all one day when we see you, one day when we're with you in heaven and you show, Lord, what you've done with each and every offering how that you answered each and every prayer and all that you've done, Lord, we'll rejoice together forever and ever. If there's a lost soul here tonight, save him before it's eternally too late. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I've thought of a lot of different titles to try to put on this, but I really want to get to one thought tonight. It'll take me a little bit to get there. I am a preacher. Uh, we talk about one thought and, you know, one thing, and we're almost through and all those different things. But I do want to quickly give you a, a few thoughts, but one thing I really want to bring out tonight, and uh, so I don't know what to title the message. I thought about uh, Together We Can Gather, 
Uh, I've thought about uh, holding your corner up, and I've thought about a lot of different things, but uh, let's look at this quickly, and I want to think about what happened here. This literally happened. I mean, can you imagine? Can you imagine what that would be like? I know we're going to see the young people come up here and all the different types of clothing that they're wearing and, and uh, representing people in different places. And there are places a lot different than where we're at. There's even foods different than what we had. That We had good food. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Uh, you can't go wrong with baby back ribs. I mean, that's, uh, that's good eating. Uh, French fries. I don't know why they put the French on there, but we had some fried potatoes. Amen. Uh, but uh, I, I tell you, it's just, a, it's just a blessing, though, to know that there's so many places and that we're able to have a part in. And, and we lose kind of focus. It's, it's hard to really imagine what all is going on tonight in so many parts of this world because of the ministry of this church, because of what you're doing. It's so easy to feel like, well, what I do isn't much. What did Brother Lester Roloff sing? Little is much when God is in it. Labor not for wealth or fame. There's a crown and you can win it if you'll go in Jesus' name. And that means go wherever he sends you. If, if you work just around the corner and live just down the block, it doesn't matter. That's where God's put you if we'll do what he wants us to do. But real quickly, some things I see here. I see that they had the same desire. Here are four people that are carrying one man that cannot walk. One man that cannot get to Jesus, he is, he's hopeless. Uh, he just can't get there. And, and, and here are four that are willing to do that. They have the same desire. They, they, uh, they put aside other things that they could be doing, and they said, let's take this man to Jesus. Let's take him to Jesus because they believed. They didn't, they didn't so much uh, believe in, in all the different things that people talked about because everybody's got a remedy. Uh, no, nowhere is any worse than Mexico. I mean, everybody's got a remedy for something. I've heard so many things that's supposed to fix and cure, and, 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 and uh, <laughs> I mean, there's some things that's just not going to happen. I saw one time a lady, and this was one of the, the more well-to-do people in the church, and uh, the little baby uh, sitting on their lap was choking a little bit on something he was eating, and she started blowing on a soft spot. I said, what are you doing? She said, I'm giving him air. <laughs> I said, I hope none of it gets in there where you're blowing, because if it does, you're probably going to kill him. Uh, but somebody told her that that would work. <laughs> I don't know how in the world that's supposed to work. I could, I could see him blowing a little bit in his face or blowing somewhere, but uh, blowing in a soft spot, that, that ain't going to do nothing for him. But somebody said it would. Did you know that when we look at these children as they walk up here, they represent people in places that have heard something that's not going to get them to heaven. They've heard things that's not going to get them to Jesus. They've heard things, and we know. So what are we going to do? We're going to find a corner, and we're going to carry the gospel message in some way, some fashion. And here they are. They had the desire. They had the desire to leave what they were doing, to leave what they could have been uh, enjoying. And, and most of the time in the Bible when you find... Uh, they, they didn't walk just across the street or down the block. They had to go quite a ways, different places, walking from place to place. I don't know about you, but it can get tiresome trying to carry someone. I don't know if you ever tried to carry somebody. I mean, you know, you can lift weights at the gym. You can do a lot of different things, but when it's pick that up and carry it a few miles down that way, that's a different story. I remember I told you I went to Mexico when I was 23. At 23, I was pretty stout. I saw that fellow over here. He just looks like he's pretty stout too. But when I was 23, I could pick up a lot. But you know what I found out? I found out I, I could pick up more than the average Mexican that I was working with. But I sure couldn't carry it as far. <laughs> uh, they could get a hold of something, and if they got it up to where they could get under it, they could take it all the way to the house. Uh, yeah, there's just something about us. If we're not careful the way we are, we can pick it up, but what are we going to do with it? Oh, we'll, we'll start. We'll begin. I, I, I have been <clears throat> one of the worst on this planet at starting and not finishing. I had a wonderful mother that finished a lot of things for me when I was growing up. I would start raising this, and I'd start raising tropical fish, and I'd start raising, uh, oh, I, couldn't, I don't have time to go down the list. Sometimes she finished up for me or helped me understand how we was going to have to finish it. It's easy to start, 
But we've got to keep on keeping on. We've got to keep going. We've got to keep doing. We've got to get people to Jesus. It's wonderful to have a missions conference and thank the Lord for it and how it blesses our heart and encourages us. And uh, we get around the missionary family. Oh, hallelujah, and what joy, and how oh, with all that greeting. But guess what? There comes a day when it's time to close them suitcases for a one-way trip. I tell you, I've told many, many missionaries, you better, you better, you better keep on your knees and keep praying and keep holding your corner because one of these days, one of these days you're going where they're not going to say, oh, it's so good to see the missionaries. You may be going somewhere where somebody says, why don't you just go back where you came from? You don't speak our language well. You don't like our food. You, <laughs> hey, it happens. It's not easy to go somewhere where you've never ate what they eat, never done what, never lived like they live, and all of a sudden, you're an odd-looking family. And guess what? You've got to just keep on holding your corner. Keep on serving God. Keep on working to get people to the feet of Jesus. I one time took a good missionary family to the airport in Atlanta, Georgia. And guess what? I couldn't get all their suitcases out of the trailer in the van before they said, let's load them back up. We're going home. Didn't even get on the plane. This is many years ago. Many, many years ago. And after some more prayer, and, and that missionary family went and served God for many, many years on the mission field. But I'm going to tell you what, the devil will play tricks on us. He'll say, why don't you let your corner down? There's three people. Surely they can do it. There's others doing it. There's others giving to faith promised missions. I don't need to give. If we're going to hold our corner up and if we're going to get souls to Jesus, we're going to have to do our part. We're going to have to stay faithful to him. They, they, they had the same desire. They had the same dedication. They said, we're willing, we're willing to do this. We're willing to do this because of the need of this person. And they had the same determination. When they got there, the Bible said... They couldn't get to Jesus. Isn't it amazing? Here's a family, and it's your day because you're here, so I got you. <laughs> Here's a family here, and all the effort and all the prayers and all the monies that it takes uh, to get them to the mission field. And guess what? When they get there, you know, you think you're going to get there, and you're going to say, hey, we got, we, we're starting a church over here, so y'all come, and everybody's going to, not everybody, we're, in our mind, a lot of people's going to come. Well, guess what? You hold them up in prayer because it may be a while that they don't have hardly anybody coming. There's a lot of places you go. It starts out that way. It's not that they're just flocking to get there. And there's so many things that can hinder us. I mean, when we say, Lord, I, I believe this is what you want me to do in faith, promise, mission is given, and I'm praying and I'm trusting you, and, and then we have a, a flat tire. Not only do we have a flat tire, our wife drove on that tire to where now it's no good and we've got to buy a new tire. <laughs> I got a call from my wife and she was some distance from the house and she said, this tire is almost flat. What do I do? I was in Georgia. She was in South Carolina. I said, turn around and go home. I knew what was going to happen. We was going to have to have a new tire. It was going to be destroyed and it was. But guess what? The devil used anything and everything to get us to believe and we can't hold our corner up. We're going to have to have some determination. We're going to have to be willing to get through the crowd. There's so many things that can uh, hinder us from getting to Jesus. I want to tell you something. I told you how the devil loves to fight somebody that wants to reach old souls for Christ. And did you know, did you know that uh, when missionaries go, he don't like it. When you give, he don't like it. When we pray, he don't like it. But I'm going to tell you somebody that does. <laughs> and that's Jesus. Here they are. They get there. The determination is, we've got to get this person to Jesus. I don't know how far they carried him. But when they got there, they couldn't get in the door. They couldn't get in the window. They couldn't get to Jesus. But they said, we came for a reason. We're in this to get this person to the feet of Jesus. They got up on the roof. We read the story. I've often wondered after they tore that roof up, who fixed it? <laughs> who fixed the roof? Uh, somebody had to fix the roof. I don't know about that, but that wasn't the focus. I'm human. I get to wondering about things like that. But the, the main thing was they got the roof. I believe they listened. They couldn't, they couldn't see in. They couldn't get in. They, they got up on the roof. Can you imagine them up there crawling around trying to listen? Where is he? Just, just where is he at? Where's Jesus? 
what part of the roof do we need to get off here? And they started tearing the roof off. They got it off, and the Bible says they lowered him at the feet of Jesus. And I want you to look at this. This is really what I want to look at. I won't keep you long. I know there's other things to do. They bring him in verse, in verse uh, 3. And uh, they couldn't get in in verse 4 for the, the, the multitude of people. They uncovered the roof. And when they had broken it up, they let down the bed wherein the sick of the palsy lay. When Jesus saw their faith, he said unto the sick of the palsy, Son, thy sins be forgiven thee. Did you see what that said? When Jesus saw their faith. I know as we pray for missionaries, we ask God to give faith. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Lord, help those souls in those countries. But do you know where God looks first? He's looking right here in this church. Liberty Baptist Tabernacle, right? And, and he's looking here. And guess what? If he sees your faith in faith promise praying, faith promise giving, and this thing about holding up our corner to get the gospel message and get uh, hearts and souls to the feet of Jesus. If he sees our faith, he's going to do a work. Right. It's easy for me to think, well, the missionary's not working hard enough, and probably, probably he could work harder. Well, this and that and all kind of reasons, but I wonder sometimes the reason more souls are not being saved and more churches are not being planted is because of my lack of faith. But I'm not there. <laughs> Well, Jesus said when he saw their faith, he said, I'm going to do something. I believe if we'll get involved afresh and anew and renew our faith and renew our love and ask God to do something for us so that this is not just what we do here, this is what we do for him. And, and when we do that, the Bible says he saw their faith. Yes, I know a lost soul has to have faith to be saved. But I believe God works because he sees the faith of his children. I believe he works because he sees the faith of a church like yours. I believe he works because he sees the faith of the missionaries that will go. And I believe he works in the hearts of men and women, boys and girls, that's lost and dying without Jesus. Their determination. They had the same discovery. They found out that God, I had wrote down was, and I marked it out, is faithful. Yes, he was faithful in this instant, but he is faithful. He's always faithful. Our brother said to, something about renewing our, 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 our work and passing out gospel tracts, giving a tract to somebody. You may think, you know what, I don't think that helped. I don't even think that guy really wanted it. That's all right. Just say, Lord, I have faith. I have faith that you can touch his heart. I've seen people get mad, wad them up, throw them on the ground. But you know what? <laughs> I have faith enough to believe they can go home and feel bad about what they did. Oh, they may say all kind of bad words and say all kind of things and look at you mean, but they have to close their eyes and go to sleep that night and the next night and the next night. And we've got a God in heaven that can even take that. He can take anything that we do through and by faith and get glory to his name. Somebody you thought that there wasn't, didn't much happen there. You, you folks that get out and go and do. Sometimes you knock on a door and it seems like there's not going to be any. That, that, was, well, that was in vain. And you come by with the bus and there's somebody standing out there. I didn't think they was going to come. They didn't act like they cared. Well, there was somebody that cared and he died on an old rugged cross. And he sent somebody to tell us about Jesus so we could tell others about Jesus so they could get saved and share with their family and with others about Jesus. This thing works. It's not our plan. It's not the independent Baptist plan, although I do believe that what I see, the independent Baptist churches are, are the ones that's very, very, very active in this. But it's not our plan. It's God's plan. It's God's plan. Anybody can get involved in it. But here they were, taking him to Jesus. They found the same delight. They, they left happy and rejoicing. <laughs> they didn't carry him home. <laughs> Isn't that a good thing? <laughs> you, you get him to Jesus, and then, then he takes care of it. That's all we're supposed to do. Can you imagine if they're walking every step of the way thinking, oh, it's going to be hard. We've we got to carry him home just like we're carrying him over. I don't believe he's thinking that. I believe they thought, you know what, if we can just get him to Jesus, 
If we can just get him to Jesus, Jesus can change his life. Jesus can raise him up. <laughs> they might have even told him a time or two. Well, I'll tell you what, we're going to carry you over there, but you're carrying this, I don't know what stretcher or whatever he was on. You're carrying it home, boy. <laughs> well, we're not going to carry it home for you. You're carrying it home. Can you imagine somewhere along the way when it finally dawned on him and he's like, you know what? Yes, yes, if you'll get me to Jesus, I'll carry it home. I hadn't walked in a long, long time. Maybe ever, I don't know what kind of shape he was in and what all it was he had, but I know one thing. He too was happy to get to Jesus. I've seen people, I've seen lives changed. I've seen people, eh, folks, every, everywhere is not like here. There's a... You think a lot of stuff is done out in the open here. In some of these countries, it's really done out in the open. I mean, nobody, they don't, put, they don't put drunks in jail in Mexico very, very, very seldom. They're just laying on the street. They're just over on the sidewalk. I remember one time over in the tall grass part of the, somebody said that, oh, it was Brother, uh, Brother Amos, and, uh, Brother Amos and Brother Muscle said that, uh, he said, you know, I didn't see that part with the tall grass where you had to hold your hand up to see where you was going. Over there where that was at, that was hot country. And one night I was coming home, and in this curve there was a, there was a fellow laying in the edge of the road. I mean, in the edge. He wasn't right in the middle, but he was laying in the edge of the road, laying there sleeping. I'm a good American. I got stopped, and I went back there. I got him up. He didn't want to get up. I said, man, get over here in the grass and lay down. You're going to get run over when these buses will come through here and run over you. You'll be dead. Lay down over here in this soft grass. Fighting me every step of the way. And finally I figured out what he was stammering. He kept saying, ticks, ticks. He didn't want to lay in the grass. He wanted to lay in the road. <laughs> I'm going to tell you something. It'll quit ticking if you get run over by a bus, amen. <laughs> uh, it'll be over. Uh, but, but you know that people sometimes don't know how much they need what we have found in Jesus. But we need to have a desire, some de dedication, determination, so we can have that discovery and have that delight. Jesus said when he saw their faith, he said unto the sick of the palsy, Son, thy sins be forgiven thee. When that was their faith. I believe it was five of them that he saw. But he didn't say he saw his faith. He said he saw their faith. Sometimes we read those, and I do trust you'll take time. I know it's not easy, but from time to time, try to read the missionary prayer letters. I know you probably can't read them all every time, but, but try to at least look and see and find out and do. We live in an age of technology, and we still don't know what's going on. But, did you know if we can know and pray and have faith with those missionaries, hold up our part, they hold up their part, we get people to the feet of Jesus, and guess what he says? I see the faith of those folks over there in Georgia. I see the faith of the missionary over there in Hungary. I see the faith of, of, of all that's working together and praying to support and do and get the gospel. I'm going to work. I'm going to do something for the hearts and lives of these people. Again, I believe, that that, I believe that that man had to have faith, but Jesus said he saw their faith. Let's let God see our faith, and he can see it through faith promise, missions giving. He can see it through the prayers that we pray. He can see it in what we're doing for the Lord. Thank you. I know there's folks here that's been so faithful, uh, 40 years more and more. But you know how they did it? <laughs> one step at a time. One day at a time. One week at a time. From Sunday to Sunday. From day to day. If we'll just do what God wants us to do. And be faithful. And do it with faith. Faith in Him. Lord, we're doing this because, yes, it is a commandment. But, Lord, we're doing this because you died on an old rugged cross. We're doing this because we hear our children say over and over, John 3.16... And we know that you so loved the world that you gave your only begotten Son. And Lord, we want to be involved in sharing that with others. And sharing that with people that need, the, need salvation. I'm glad God's still saving souls. He's saving souls in Georgia. 
And he's saving souls in the country of Georgia. I know you're not going to believe this. I was in Alabama. You might now that I said that. I was in Alabama. I was in Huntsville. I know, uh, not Huntsville. Um, Han uh, I think it's Hansy over there with Brother Alan Sinclair. And I went to a restaurant on my own. I was there several days, so I went down to the restaurant and ate. And there was, that was the time. I can't remember what was going on. It was all over the news about something going on in the country of Georgia. And I'm not kidding you. A waitress coming to sit down and was talking to some people she knew that were eating and was looking at that. And she said, I just can't believe all that's happening that close to us. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> but guess what? We might know where it's at, but my question is, are we getting the gospel message to them? I mentioned to Sister uh, Joins, I get confused. I got my flag over there. I'm not even sure where that country's at, but I am sure there's people there that need Jesus. There is the name of a missionary family wrote on there, and I want to pray for them. I don't know who they are. I don't know how it's going, but I know one thing, together, we can take souls to the feet of Jesus. Let's do our part. Let's let God see our faith so that he can work in all the different places with a gospel message going out. Let's stand together and pray. Father, we love you. Thank you for your goodness. Thank you for allowing us just to have a part, to have a corner, Lord, that we can carry. Lord, help us to not become tired and, Lord, to grow discouraged. Help us, Lord, not to give up or let up. Help us just to keep on keeping on for you. And Lord, help us to have the faith that we need to have. Lord, that these prayers that we pray, and, and Lord, the, the offerings that we can give, Lord, it's, it's not just words, and it's not just money. Lord, it's getting souls to Jesus. It's getting the gospel message to them. And it's getting them at the feet of Jesus, at the work of Calvary. And Lord, at that place where you can save them and turn their life around and Lord, work in their family and save their family. And Lord, work in the, where that's at. And, and, and Lord, let churches grow. And let them tell others about Jesus. And Lord, you keep getting the honor and the glory and the praise for what you've done. Thank you, Lord, for this good church. Thank you, Lord, for how faithful they've been. Encourage their hearts. Provide through them, Lord, that they can do more and more for you. We ask it in Jesus' name.